Welcome back guys. Today we're reacting to the Dawn FM Amazon experience and we're doing it live. If you guys see anything that I miss, please let me know in the comments and I'll definitely uh, try to keep up with it. But we're gonna jump right into it. Amazon original. Sorry, looked really bad. Okay, so he's already old. He wasn't old before. So I'm curious if that will be explained in like the next music video, I'm assuming. But I did see like in the previous one where his hands were getting aged and they were like, you know, the Dementor chick was suck sucking his soul from his, his life. So I know we were headed towards that, but I think that it might be better explained in the next one is what I'm gathering. I actually didn't even like think about having ads during uh, during the live here. That's actually really funny. Don FM. Dude, he's definitely a good actor. I'll, I'll give him that 100%. He's very compelling. What the hell is that? Oh, that's his, that's his side profile. <laughs> he has an EXO hearing aid, I think. That's, that's really funny. Oh, he's live. So is he actually live right now, or is that just like part of the the act here? Because that sounds like like really really good. I mean, and we know we know how great he sounds live, of course. But that I don't know. That could go either way. It almost is. It could be like the the Vivo ones where it's a live performance, but there's no audience. Is that kind of what it's like? Okay, he is live. Huh. Is there a, like a live audience too? Oh, whoa. Huh. This is crazy. I feel like it's like, it's like a, almost like a mashup, isn't it? Cause no, I guess that that was gasoline, right? Going into the next track there. Very interesting. I love all the blue and dark tones. Like it's so consistent like the red suit and everything and all the red and yellow bright things were so prominent through the last experience and i think obviously we can see the blue and the black like that too so it is kind of like a mashup cool so i have the chat like on this side so i'm I feel bad i'm like trying to look at, at all of you <laughs> no idea that there's anything behind there that looks crazy Dang. It's 5 a.m. my time again. I'm calling and you know it's me. I'm pushing myself further up, just trying to feel my heart beat beat. I wrap my head so loud, you can't do nothing. Can see that 
Dude, wouldn't it be so cool to be like one of the background dancers in this, just to be a part of it? I wonder how they could have choreographed this at all. Like it reminded me of the, was it at the Super Bowl and he had all the versions of himself that, you know, kind of came out and they were all bumping into him. Like, I feel like something like that is so difficult to to make look right when it's so chaotic like that. I don't know. This is really cool though. I love, I just love that it's put together in a full like thing. 34 minutes is, is crazy. Like that's just awesome. I'm trying to see if there's any significance to him like each time he says his line it turns to something else you know like I thought it would be a change in his appearance or he'd be doing something slightly different but I don't know I can't I can't notice anything I don't know about you guys I'm staring into the abyss Yeah, controlled chaos for sure. That looks so nice right there. To sing with all the makeup and prosthetics would probably be so difficult. Seriously, I love the EXO like here you need. It's probably like his his monitor for the live, but it just works as a hearing aid <laughs> since he's an old man. <laughs> That's so funny. You spin me around so I can breathe. It's only safe for you and me. I know you won't let me on. And if I finally die in peace, just wrap my body in these sheets and pour out the gasoline. Damn. He has like the epilepsy warning on, on everything. And maybe I should have put that in the description on my thing here too. But he does such a good job. Seriously. The differences in the voices from like the beginning of this, of the song. And like, I swear it's like at least three or four different vocals that he goes through in this track alone. And it's very, very impressive. And they're so contrasting or like it almost kind of like steps down in a way and then like jumps up i don't know it's really awesome around, 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 around we go in this game called life we are nothing damn dude Dude. Holy shit. That was crazy. The way he was rattling that out was absolutely beautiful. Holy shit. That was just insane. That was fucking awesome. Seriously. That's gotta be one of the most exhilarating concerts to ever go to. Seriously. Damn. Holy shit. I love that.
No way. Holy shit. Is this just gonna be packed of transitions? Is that what I'm in for? Is that what we're doing? Because even from the the intro of the of Dawn and to Gasoline there was, and then right here, like, holy shit. That's very, very well done. The, all the instrumentals throughout this project were, like, very almost experimental, I feel like, especially in comparison to After Hours. Like, it's almost like you took After Hours, like, let's make this twice as weird twice is out there <laughs> i don't know oh, that's the the dj in the video that's pretty cool that's way cool yeah let me know if there's any other cameos definitely let me know if there's like anything i miss please because i'm sure there's going to be some things especially doing this live like it's totally different setting for me right now <laughs> to be honest so yeah if uh if i'm missing anything by all means let me know <laughs> That's a good transition. It may be slightly abrupt, but that's that's definitely a good transition, in my opinion. I feel like it, it flows, especially just right off of his vocal there. We're going back in time. I like to see you try. Unpacking thoughts through tunnels in your mind. I fix your mushroom tea and cross the rest of the sea. Release yourself to escape reality It doesn't phase you I need a breakthrough I only want what's right in front of me It's quite unusual Seeking approval Begging for it desperately I saw it. There he is That's pretty cool It's literally like a, just like with the tone of the project and everything up leading to this, it's it's like a purgatory rave party, <laughs> you know, like everyone's has nowhere else to go. So they're just like, yeah, let's, let's just dance it out. Let's dance it out and, and, and rave. Why not? I feel like this song has it all, you know what I mean? It could be easily a banger. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if this was one of the higher streamed uh, songs from the project, but it was kind of one that I was on the fence about. But I randomly, I think I listened to this song like two or three times today, just, just cause like this one just jumped out at me. I don't know why. <laughs> it has a very good instrumental though. And he really does like belt it out. And dude, he's always so impressive live. It's unbelievable. Holy cow, dude. I can see the real you, girl. You don't have to hide. Forget about what your daddy said. I'll teach you how to shine. And all the things you tolerated. I love the camera turn like that. He's one of the few artists that I think I I genuinely like live just as much, if not more, than the actual recorded. Like I think he would just be entertaining live all the time. I, I haven't heard a single bad live performance from him. And I don't know, dude. It's it's incredible. Like it's it's 
you can tell that he just has the the ability that the the talent outshines the actual like vocal effects that they ever put on his voice ever that's what i think is so cool about all the live performances to this point too is that it just has been very thematic with the project itself like that's the way to do it you know make it make it memorable and make it stand out you know you're going to have this whole wave of everyone remembering this old version of of abel or the red suit or you know whatever theme is going on for that project at the time like that's how you really make it like stand out for sure. The Alone Again Vivo performance was was like haunting. I think that song, I think that performance like won me over for the song alone. Like I think I liked it anyway, but hearing it in that context just made me keep revisiting it because it was just so good. All the tones of red are interesting, you know. Because it's definitely like blue and then you got the red just flashing in like that. Damn, bro. Got your boy killing it on the keys. We're switching. I already know we're switching right now. Yep. Like, there's just no stopping, you know? To me, that's just so much more than, here's an album of of 13 songs or something. Like, here's 45 minutes of music that is without break. You know, you can listen to it in, in the songs, the tracks, but like, the way that this is put together is a musical experience start to finish. And I love it. I have what each song blend into the next. It's seriously brilliant. Like it's, it's weird to me that more artists don't do that to honestly, like I, I feel like if I were making music or I were making an album, if I were a producer, especially like every song on every project of mine would just end and then start into the next one. Like, I don't know. That that's just me though, maybe. A lot of it is just about going viral on TikTok and making at least one viral hit that's going to give your album sales. Like I think that's the biggest respect that I have for the weekend at this point and you know why I'm so infatuated with him is that like at the top of the game he drops this and it's so different and out of the ordinary. Like I would not expect someone who is just essentially appealing to everybody to drop something so experimental and artistic and thought provoking like props to him like he could just be putting out the the you know driest what's going to sell standard amount of everything and just be peddling it out to stay on top and he's not so like Mad respect, for sure. Drake could never. <laughs> That's funny. Drake is the machine that I'm talking about that just puts out what's going to sell and hops on the bandwagon of, of what's hot and new. Like, That's, in a nutshell, why I don't like Drake, to be honest. I'm already taken, dude. Da -na -na -na. Dude.
Dude. <laughs> if you guys can't tell, I really, really, really fuck with this instrumental. Like, it is so engaging and so much fun. Like, I don't know. Everything about it just keeps me in the song from start to finish. For sure. 100%. So this, okay, so there, it's no live audience, obviously. It's just like, like you said, live music video performance. So was this released exclusively to Amazon? Like, is this the only place that's on there? Because even this isn't even a, I think this is a fan channel. I don't know. That, I might get in trouble for this video, guys, honestly. But we, we, we just went for it anyway. It's interesting. It, it definitely reminds me of that Vivo live performance where he was just kind of like, you know, one after another live like that. I don't know. These two albums have been just so incredible, like from the performances, the videos, the, the packaging of it, like I said, the album cover, like I really hope we get another like face cover like that where it's whatever the next step of them is, like maybe it's half robot. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just kidding. That's a joke. <laughs> What's going on? Something's happening. Just getting amped, maybe? Dude. I would love instrumental versions of his albums. The way he's just dancing. <laughs> He was hitting the freaking high note, bro. Why you gotta do us dirty like that? <laughs> Dude, it's so good. Like like I said, that instrumental, especially for Take My Breath, is just so engaging. And I, I did learn the, I mentioned it a few times during my reactions, that the Take My Breath single version, you know, that's the one from the music video. This one obviously is the actual uh, album version because it has that extended instrumental in the middle of it, which is just so beautiful, seriously. There's some kind of outside world right here. Okay, I'm, I'm just getting into the, the lore of, of everything. You know, obviously it's just live performance, so I could just be reaching here, but he he's in purgatory, okay? Let's assume that he's still just sitting here in in purgatory, right? There's outside world beyond this fan. This must mean something. I hope it does. I hope that I'm not just saying random shit, but because that, that could very well be. You know, by the end of this, he might just like open that thing up and crawl out of it. Who knows? <laughs> mm -hmm. Dude.
dude, between the instrumental, the the just the O's and the the O's that he's given us, like it, it's all there in the actual song. But live, dude, it just sounds so like raw and passionate, you know. Seeing it on his face, like even with the old man makeup, like it it like feels like raw pain, and it's so believable. Like I don't know, dude. You you could tell he wrote this song, like <laughs> you know what I mean. Thing. That bass line, dude. Y'all know how I feel about that. <laughs> I don't know how well did that did that transition or did that just kind of abrupt? I want to hear that again. That might be too far. Hold up. Okay, it pauses. That's cool though. That's fine. I'm cool with that. <laughs> We're chilling. Dude, this must have been exhausting for him. Like, I'm sure every concert is exhausting for an artist, but, like, he's really getting into it between, you know, being in the huge crowd of people and they're all dancing and he's dancing and the movements going back and forth, walking here, walking there, remembering what he's doing, remembering to sing and remembering to sing like a goddamn angel. That's important. Like, all dressed up in the prosthetics. Like, he's probably sweating bad, bro. <laughs> for sure. Oh shit, I actually didn't mean to pause, but I was gonna say his live performance of this song is actually like really, really good too. I, like I mentioned on the last video that I really like this one uh, a lot more. Like I feel like I was, it took me a second to really connect with this one, but him doing it live is really, really nice for sure. Dude. See, he's sinking. See, is this an illusion or is he sinking? I think he's, I think he's sinking. Come on, they're they're messing with me, bro. They're messing with me for sure. But you know the, I was just thinking like, I could definitely see the alternate be just being like way better because like what really stands out is is his vocals like, for this one at least in particular. Um, because. I think I think I remember mentioning that in my album reaction is the this bass line is like hit or miss for me. It either jumps in at me when I hear it and it's like really groovy or it's like just off like too much like forced almost. So I could see like having the remixed uh, instrumental just really taken to the next level. But also, you know, the thing with his live performances, I was also going to say, is that he he always changes it up. Like anyone could just like rehearse their song enough that they could perform it the way that it, it is meant to be performed. But he like always puts his own little sauce and jazz in it that just makes it so present and intimate in the moment, I think. I hold you through the toughest spots when you feel like it's the end. Cause life is still living. And it's life is still living. There's no way I'm like just noticing this. All the people turned into into brotherhood people. We're raving. We're raving. So it's when he it's when he came out out of the out of this. They all turned into 
that's a trip. I like just noticed that they went from raving people. I don't know why I just noticed because <laughs> to to the hooded figures from the uh, previous videos. So what a trip. It's bad. It, it's I'm shocked that I just noticed. We still got our DJ though. Don't worry. DJ's still in the house. He's not going nowhere. <laughs> We might be sacrificing Abel, but the DJ is still here. Oh my. Dude. The way he sings that is beautiful right there. Am I crazy? This part right here, the way he's singing is so, so beautiful. This right here is why I like it live. Like, so much more a lot of the time. Right there, dude. And right there. Holy shit. That's just beautiful. Like, when you take the way that it was, you know, sang in the song, and then you put twice as much passion in it when you're singing live, like, it really just adds so much to the meaning of it and the believability of it. Like, it feels like he, he, means, it, he means it more. Like, he, it becomes more of a reality, I guess. I don't know. So strange, dude. I almost keep feeling like he's like sinking more and more, but I don't know, he keeps looking like he's like dipping. And it's also like strangely like a Pentagon looking, and you know, we obviously have our sacrificial conductors. <laughs> he's still just dancing in there. <laughs> the little foot dance. Weird. Even he's confused by that one. He did sink. I swear he's way lower than he was a second ago. This is a trip, dude. I really like the way that one like just went straight to his face. I don't know, that was very nice, actually. I love that. The way that's done visually and vocally or whatever, auditorially, is just amazing. Very well done. Trauma in my life. I've been so cold to the ones who love me, baby. I look back now and I realize. Now remember when I held 
Oh my god. Holy shit. This is just kind of like getting better and better as far as peak ability to sing live. Like he's really, really giving it all out right now. Like that's insane. Holy shit. Dude, oh my god. Dude, his uh, ability here is, is crazy. Like this is this is gonna be an alone again type situation, I think, because I'm I'm really feeling this track right now. Especially the live. Just crazy, dude. Damn, bro. Dude, that sound effect was really, really nice. Absolute banger, guys. Absolute banger, 100%. Holy shit. Chills, yeah. True. Like, the, it's just such a moment. Like, it just reminds me of, like, the, the typical, like, singing, singing in the rain type thing. Like, that's that was the type of moment that was. But it was created sh solely with him just standing there with, with his voice. Like, Jesus Christ, dude. That is just beautiful. Yeah, the transition's crazy here. Yeah. That's really nice. Hundred percent. Yo, back up here now? Everyone's gone. Except for our DJ, of course. Dude. Guys, fuck. That, this song gets me excited every single time I hear it, just so you guys know. This song, that transition, that was my like most favorite part of the album experience, at least initially, was just that, that handful of uh, transitions from those few songs. Like, uh, like, like the string of them, I mean. So like, this is one of them, and fuck. I can't get over it. Dude. The sample is far, 100%. So we got our, our red cloaked lady back, of course. That's, you know, to be expected. I, I guess I didn't expect it, but 
it shouldn't be expected because we saw the others and, and she's like the leader. It kind of reminds me of Star Wars and I'm just kind of a huge dork to be totally honest with you. So like hearing the, the like space noises and stuff like and seeing this setting like this just 100% reminds me of Star Wars. Even she looks like like a one of the Sith guards or whatever from the, the like sequels. You know what I mean? But yeah. I love it. I, I really do. Like aesthetically, I really enjoy these videos alone. As soon as she touched him, his face turned red. I don't know if anyone else caught that. She's like walking around the corner, everything's blue. And right there, it's gonna turn red on his face. See that? Right after she touches him. I really like just like the tones of red and the blue with, you know what I mean? Like it's consistent and it's beautiful. The lighting of this is very well done and, you know, very intentional, obviously. Like Jesus, holy shit. Grazing, not glazing. Grazing him, not glazing him, guys. Okay, chill out. I don't know if it's a hot take to say that that is like probably my favorite song from the album, to be honest. Like that is easily up there, top three maybe, if, if I was trying to not be polarizing or at least give my chance to give myself a chance to like think it over. That song is like very, very high up there for me, for sure. Reality. 
and I want to hear I'm really glad he included them. But you're defeated, baby. Broken, hurting, suffering from a shattered soul. A shattered soul. Let me be there. Let me be there. Oh my god, bro. I'm so glad that he included that moment. Like, this is my favorite part of the freaking album, is these two. Like, so, fuck yeah, dude. What an amazing moment. And I love how every, all this, the Sith Lords, the Sith Apprentices are, you know, sitting in the background here and letting them, letting, letting them get it out. Like, everything about this, dude, is just so awesome. A shattered soul. Right here, dude. It's gonna kill me. Let me be there for your heart. Let me be there. I can be there to your home. Let me love you. Let me love you like you and me. And I'll make it, make it my responsibility. Let me love you, let me love you like you need And you can kick me, kick me to the earth It's okay baby, I promise that I know worse Back then I was sorry I, and I was so cynical Dude, this song seriously gets me. Like I said, between between the uh, previous and this one, like I can't get over it at all. Okay. Honestly, this performance as a whole is way better than even like the Vivo performance. Like maybe even better than like the Super Bowl performance. Like the Super Bowl was cool, but this definitely like, this is just such an epic thing. Like I can't get over that. I, I definitely like this one. I feel like I might not be, you know, holding it in as high regard as a lot of you guys. And maybe I'll have my turn with it. And you know, maybe this will, will turn me to that, but I have yet to uh, to really like glue myself to it, I guess. You know, it's definitely something that I like, but there's just a few others that I can't get out of my, my rotation. <laughs> I can be very obsessive. I'm sure everyone can kind of relate to that with music, but if I really fuck with a song, it's going to be in rotation multiple times throughout the day you know if not even just on on repeat for sure like i said it's definitely not a bad song i think i just have yet to to have my turn with it i think it will come around for sure
feel like it is like strangely upbeat and like a it feels like a almost like a down song like i don't know i get i I understand that it's not and it's supposed to be like more uplifting but i feel like it almost should be so at least me meeting in the middle a little more i don't know i don't know what what is making it like off for me like i don't i don't want to put it down because i really i do like it but if i was trying to like explain what what's not like gravitating me to it is like you know is there someone else starry eyes and uh even take my breath like i feel like they have this specific idea that it's kind of like honed in on and maybe maybe this one doesn't quite blend the same way when it comes to like the vocals and the instrumental like the instrumental is very different from the others like from the project i feel like i don't know i don't know that, that's just kind of my analysis while i'm i'm thinking right here i guess I think the sad definitely bleeds through, even throughout the beginning middle here, that like want for hope, hunger for hope, I suppose. I can't get it out of my Damn, bro. Right there, too. Right here, holy shit. Uh, you tried your best for me, I know. No. Don't do this to me. Is it gonna do it? You're tuned to Don F. Guys, this is sick. Okay, first of all, before I miss it, the, the acoustic part there, you're right, was very beautiful, especially the way the way that little outro was was amazing. I, I really love the Phantom Regret by Jim. Seriously, that is one of my favorite things ever happened that's like an unrelated actual like song song that was put on an album, like a skit like outro, intro, interlude, whatever you want to call it, that isn't actually singing or something like it is seriously some one of my favorite things to have ever happened so i'm very excited that that made it on here you're tuned to don fm i didn't even notice i did i did at one point i didn't notice when it actually changed from nuns to people again i guess it was a while ago it was after holy shit yeah i really yeah damn guys it changed back from nuns and we're, we're people again what is the significance of that? There's got to be a, a significance to that for sure. You're tuned to Don FM. The middle of nowhere on your dial. So sit back and unpack. You may be here a while. Now that all future plans have been postponed, and it's time to look back on the things you thought you owned, do you remember them well? Were you high or just stoned? And how many grudges did you take to your grave when you weren't liked or followed? How did you behave? It's like the, he's the only one that hears them. The dissonant chord you were strumming. Were you ever in tune with the song life was humming? If the pain's living on when your body's long gone and your phantom regret hasn't let it go yet, you may not have died in the way that you must. All specters are haunted by their own lack of trust. When you're all out of time, there's nothing but space. No hunting, no gathering, no nations, no race. 
and heaven is closer than those tears on your face. And the purple rain falls, we're all bathed in its grace. Heaven's for those who let go of regret. And you have to wait here when you're not all there yet. Okay. I don't I know that I've processed this enough. Okay. But he says heaven's a place for those who process regret. And this is where you say when you have when you're not there yet. Like you're uh I love how it could be translated to like state of mind and mentality. Like obviously you don't have to die to be feeling this way. Like you're for anyone who deals with like anxiety and stuff, like when you don't let go of your regret, you are trapped. You know what I mean? I I don't know. As someone who experiences it, it's hard to like put into words. It really does just like hold you captive in a, in a lot of ways. So it's like when you aren't letting go and you can't release, you aren't at peace, which would be like a heaven. And instead, you're you're stuck in like a purgatory. Like I I just love that analogy. Uh, at least that's that's was like my interpretation at least but you could be there by the end of this song where the weekend's so good and he plays all week long bang it gong get it on and if your broken heart's heavy when you step on the scale you'll be lighter than air when they pull back the veil consider the flowers they don't try to look right they just open their petals turn to the light dude i love i love that i need to i need to hear it again so i can i can quote what he's saying there but i love what he's saying broken hearts heavy when you step on the scale the it'll be lighter than air when you pull back the veil so it's like i tried to like process what that really meant and i thought that it was like i guess my interpretation was you know if your broken heart is heavy like you're it's still there unresolved and unfixed and you just allow yourself to stay broken that when you find the one that you love, it will be a paper house, right? Like it won't be something of substance because you're you're not fully in it. Like you're you're imbalanced, and it's not going to to work out the way that that it should or could, or that you would want to. I guess I don't know. Consider the flowers; they don't try to look right. They just open their petals and turn to the light. Are you listening real close? Heaven's not that, it's this. It's the depth of I love this, this, dude. You don't reach for bliss. God knows life is chaos, but he made one thing true. You gotta unwind your mind, train your soul to align, and dance till you find that divine boogaloo. In other words, You gotta be heaven to see heaven. May peace be with you. Dude, this seriously is just such a great message. Shout out Micah Bickman. God damn. Shout out Micah. And Abel Tesfay. God damn, dude. Seriously, this this was just crazy. Is that all? This is just credits now? Is there an end credit scene? Like the Avengers? No. He's just looking around actually. That's funny. Yeah, guys, that was definitely just really cool. Seriously, it really was just awesome. And I love the message of the Phantom Regret. Like, because like he says, to be or to see heaven, you have to be heaven and all that. But it's also like you you have to bring happiness to others. Like, I feel like that's such a, a large message in that. It's like you can't just selfishly look for the the happiness like you have to bring joy to yourself to the people around you to your family your loved ones and and then you'll get there you know what i mean like i think that's that's like half the point for me at least that's the way i i take it after hours is the name of a movie as well and then don fm is obviously a radio station so like the next ones should be some sort of piece of art or like surround a piece of art like a book or a painting or like uh some sort of media maybe like i thought that was a very interesting uh point for that too for an album 2024 i hope is it announced for 2024 is it for sure coming this year is that is that for sure a thing i know eminem announced an album i don't know if you guys are excited about that but obviously i'm excited as fuck <laughs> 2024 there's going to be an eminem album which is just 
amazing. So I'm 100% excited about that. We can release an album every two years. Is that a thing that he does? 2022 for Dawn, 2020 for After Hours, 20, what was in 2018? I don't know. I don't know anything guys. <laughs> as a weekend, you may still do features as Abel. So how is that going to work with him changing his name? I don't know if you guys know, but the him changing his name, like is he gonna just change everything that says the weekend to say Abel Tesfe and everything is just gonna get, or is he just gonna like step away from that, put that on hold and then there will be the Abel Tesfe, like a new, another, account made that he starts making music under which which would be pretty cool that'd be the way that i think i'd prefer um, one question is the art behind you vinyls yes they are vinyls fun fact they they're just the covers because i i'm incredibly worried about them falling off the wall so i i've taken the vinyls out but yes these are are the actual vinyls so i mean here's for after hours i have it like in the actual sleeve so that it's not sitting in the cover because I didn't want it to fall off the wall and, and get damaged. But yes, they are. They are vinyls. Crazy Theory After Hours has three bonus tracks that might be one for each album. Nothing compares for After Hours. Missed You for Dawn FM and Final Lullaby for the last one. Interesting theory, actually. That's crazy. That you you might be you actually might be onto something right there. That's very, very interesting. I don't know. Because, cause yeah, then the alternate world for Don FM, there's only the one new song, and the others are just like the, the remixes. So, interesting. My dear melancholy hit, gonna hit very hard if you're going through a breakup. Um, I'm not going through a breakup, so uh, it probably won't it probably won't hurt that hard. But, I mean, I've, I've been through some, some bad breakups before, so I could definitely, I can definitely uh, relate to things. So, it might not, like, you know make me break down <laughs> or anything maybe maybe i'm a pretty sensitive dude so uh, it is possible yes i i won't do the soundtrack until way later because i after i make it back to that that point so I'll, I'll go through the rest of his catalog first for sure you can just listen to the music i've never seen it either good for you <laughs> it's pretty sick like I, I i've definitely been there with certain things like um, most notably, and this might be a hot take, especially if I have any, any hip hop heads and right now, or, or that will watch this, that, uh, get rich or die trying by 50 cent. He, he has the get rich or die trying album, which is fucking fantastic, a uh, classic. And then he has the get rich or die trying movie. And then he has the get rich or die trying soundtrack. I've never actually watched the get rich or die trying movie. I've seen like parts of it growing up as a kid or whatever, but, um, I obviously love his actual solo project, but then the movie soundtrack is really good. So I, I completely feel you there, honestly. Dang, dude, two two and a half hour stream. I didn't think that my my thirty minute thirty four minute video was gonna take me, uh, two and a half hours. So I know a lot of it was chatting with you guys, which was really awesome. So I do appreciate you guys jumping in and you know having given information and just chatting along, dude. This has been really really cool thank you guys seriously i appreciate it please leave a like guys it, it really does get it out to other people at this point i'm i'm still just building my fan base and a lot of you guys that have been come around and frequently i've made it into the stream so it's really cool to see you guys pop up i i really really appreciate it guys so thank you again shout out to the weekend obviously he watches the channel and we'll see you guys